fluting. Cardboard fluting, not this kind. That is the subject of today's show, and we're going to cover all the different types and how you should use each. You've definitely seen fluting before on a shipping box. It's a wavy layer of paper in between that you can stare into and it provides a tremendous amount of cushion, rigidity, and support that makes that shipping box strong. Now, this wavy layer is created using big crimper cylinders and a heated layer of paper rolls between them and it makes that shape. So, here's another thing to watch out for. It's a flop alert. That shipper box that you think is made out of cardboard, it's not. This material is really called corrugated and fluting is what makes it magical. Wait, so if this is corrugated, what's cardboard? Oh, yeah, cardboard is a single layer paperboard that's used to make things like cereal boxes. Sometimes people call it chipboard as well. Now, back to fluting. Fluting is designed to be very structural and help support. That's why it's so much stronger than your standard cardboard. It's designed to be stacked perpendicular to, to the floor to actually create real structural rigidity. Let me show you how that works. So if the fluting is running this way, the, co the corrugate is very strong when I push down. That means it can support its own weight or the weight of your products. But if I take it this way and I smoosh it, boom, kaput. Now, if you thought the crimper machine sounded intense, make peace with the fact there are so many different types of fluting, guys, and they're delineated using letters. A is the biggest. That's like the Mac Daddy fluting. It's big, it's thick, it adds a lot of cushion, but it's not super common for shipping boxes. And what you see here is it's 4.8 millimeters tall on average, and it has 33 little flutes per lineal foot. Moving on to C. I can't. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had to process that. It truly goes from A to C and B is next. Let's just keep this rolling. So C is your next highest flute and it has 39 lineal flutes per foot. So that's great for shipping boxes and it's also quite common. Moving on to B, you've got 3.2 millimeters in height on average and 47 lineal flutes per foot. Now, what's funny is B and C actually have a similar weight because one has more flutes per foot, even though one is a little taller. So you can optimize for what suits your packaging. Moving on to E. E has 90 lineal little flutes per foot. So it has a lot of those guys in there and it's really, really tiny, about 1.6 millimeters in height. Now, if you feel like I skipped something, don't even get me started because D, even though it seems really logical, sandwiched right in there between E and C is really rarely used. It's like a mysterious forgotten cousin in the corrugate family. If you want to investigate, feel free. There are more variables to corrugated than just fluting, folks. Your standard corrugated is also known as single wall, which means it's two sheets of liner board with the fluted layer in between. You can double that puppy up, and now you've got double wall, common for heavy duty applications, but it's literally two pieces of corrugated laminated together. And then you could throw those to the side, and you've got something called single face. You might see this rolling up and protecting something like a wine bottle. It's, you know, not used for outer shipping, but it's typically used for packing. Now, if all this is a lot of options and you're looking at a box and you're saying, what are you made of? You could find by looking at your box maker certificate. This guy will tell you everything you need to know about how strong your box is and what it's made out of. At Lumi, a lot of the boxes we produce are using B flute. It's a good all around contender. But what are reasons why you'd use an alternative? Maybe you're shipping something big and bulky and you need to ship it in a box that can support it. So you're gonna opt for a big double wall or maybe something big and meaty like a flute. Now, there's other reasons why you might go with an alternative flute. Potentially, you're prioritizing a certain print surface, so you're going with a smaller flute. Or maybe you need something extremely puncture resistant, so you're going with something denser. Whatever your needs are, you can really dial it in because there's so many different options.
So there you have it, folks. Fluting is so much more than just crimped paper. It's an architectural marvel that has existed for more than a century. And fun fact, one of its first applications over a hundred years ago was in top hats, because nobody wants a floppy toppy.